Hi there. This is the tutorial for dismemberment and bone break system. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the um, the basic features to to configure the system and give you a rough understanding of how it actually pieces together. Let's have a little look at how the the bone system is actually constructed. So, if we is component based, so if we go to the dismemberment and bone break blueprints, and then if we go down to components. We have three components which are directly linked to the bone break system and the state of management. The master dismember is the parent of both bone and weapon data. Bone and weapon data, these both host the animations, animation data and the processing of that animation data. And most of it's been removed from the animation blueprint so we can control it in the arrays and manage it easier with less animations and just leave the, the blendings on the animation uh, blueprint. Before we go into these, what I'll do is I'll just show you some of the structures that are used in this and it will hopefully give us an idea of the what we're looking at when we start to see the, the big lists of, of animations. So if So if we look at the enum, we have the bone state. Bones can exist in three states. So you have your fine, damaged, and removed. Okay, so if it's fine, the bone is functioning and there's no penalty. If it's damaged, then the, art, the, the area will be unusable, the animation state will change, and physics will be applied. And if it's removed, then, well, it's, it's gone. Now if we look at the, this is the damaged uh, animation references. So for each combination for bipedal, you have 16 different damaged states. So these will be called and the appropriate array will be brought into place to display the animations. Okay, so let's have a look at the components. So we'll look at the character component first. In here, if we click on the BPC DABB bone data component that is applied to the character, we'll make the changes here if we need to make any changes rather than on the component itself. So if we do it directly on the component, that will affect everyone and overwrite everything that you've set this on. If you have this on multiple characters, then you just end up losing a power of work. So let's have a look at the conditions first, the locations. This is where you configure the basic health of each of the bones. So this one here, the maximum damage before functionality loss, is for when the bone gets broken. After over 150 points of damage, it gets broken. Bone data removed from torso, 50. We also have the damage multiplier, which we have as a lower number on some of the bones and a higher number on the other bones, say as head. So if you get shot in the head, at the moment it's a four time multiplier, but if you get shot in the lower arm, it's a 0.2 damage multiplier. So the weapon does 50 points of damage, but your arm can take 35, that's a random number, so 36 points of damage before it gets broken. So the arm receives 50 points of damage, but only 0.2 of that 50 damage gets transferred to the main character's health. So all you're getting at that point is 10 damage to the character's main health. This is also capable, so if the character receives more damage on a broken bone without dismemberment being enabled, it will cap the damage that goes to the main character. So if you repeatedly shoot a broken and, and, and torn up leg, it'll do no more damage to the character. So there's no more, I've shot you in the toe, yeah, I win. Then from there, we go into the animation states. 
So if we go down to animations, structs and array, and the SD based animation list. Now this is where most of the uh, the animation data for your character in an unarmed state. The stress, this is an unarmed states that are stored in this one. Each of the fifth, each of the sixteen states has its own um, section in here, and every one is identical. So we have the penalty, walk and run speed, and the damage animation state. We have your basic blend space for your your moving, and you also have your head aim off, aim offset. All right. So for when you are unarmed without a weapon, this will take precedence as an aim offset, so you can look around. And the idle to run is blended on standing, is blended on the head, on the neck, and on crawling is blended at the hip. We have jump sequence, recovery animations. Well, this is a, an experimental feature, which will hopefully be uh, brought back in a, a later date. And the turn in place. We can look into how to set these up a bit later on. The four settings down here and your crawling animation is distinguishing uh, basically a boolean just to switch the animation blueprint from which blend to is it crawling or is it standing where do we separate the body as far as base movement and additional movement goes now the can use weapon can move and turn and can hold weapon really come down to your choice onto what you want the character to do in any of these states for example, if you've got no legs and no arms, um, just being a torso and a head, you're not going to be able to use a gun. You're probably not going to be able to move very far and you're probably not going to be able to turn. So this just gives you a bit more um, control on that front. This is already configured to go out the box, but if you wish to swap out for your own animations or into your own characters, you can obviously customize this in some way. We'll look at that in a later video. Now, let's look at the weapon blueprint. So if we go down to blueprints and then weapons, well, let's have a look at the rifle. So again, the component on the rifle and then we go to animation list and we'll see the SD owning character animation list. So what this does is this is called when your weapon is drawn and this overwrites the the character's current blend for the unarmed animation state so the, so what we have here is the basically the idle and the uh, aim offset for both the aim down uh, sight and the the hip animation if you were to include like a um, melee, you wouldn't have to necessarily use the ADS. You could just use the, the hip and base and disable it from the can ADS here. This is also a bit valuable um, boolean for the, the fact that if you have no arms or only one arm and you're holding a heavy weapon, you can disable the, um, the ability to aim down sight. This is the sockets for storing the weapon. So obviously it's a rifle, so it's a secondary weapon and the base socket for use is the right hand okay for this animation now if we go down and we look at say both legs now let's look at left arm right arm damaged so if right arm's damaged the default socket for use is then the left hand the holster we holster socket stays the same and obviously we just use the left arm appropriate left arm animations for both reloading firing so on and so forth. Okay, so that's just a nice quick rerun through on how this is put together. And what I'll do in the next video, I'll go more into depth on how to uh, actually configure and swap this information out. And we'll look at the data tables and whatnot. Thanks very much for watching. Take care.